welcome to Solar Integrations. In today's video I'm going to be covering four different integrations for importing data from your inverter into Home Assistant and I'm going to talk briefly about the uh, differences between the integrations and how they work and um, what the advantages and disadvantages are of each integration. Um, if you have any questions or comments please let me know under the video I will be linking to each of the integrations for you I have done videos on three of them already um, if you'd like me to do a video on Keller ZA's integration please let me know and um, if you're not subscribed I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe it does help the channel thank you very much Okay, the, sir, the first integration I'm going to talk about is Stefan Joubert's Solarman integration. Um, so the way the workflow of this uh, integration is your data is coming from the inverter to the Solarman dongle, from the dongle through your router and directly to your home assistant box. So um, the speed that this happens at um, the refreshes that I've been watching uh, usually takes about between 30 and every every 30 and every 45 seconds is the refresh rate so it's relatively quick um, what all, what also happens is it's it's establishing a session going that way and then there's also a session going from the router to the dongle um, up to the cloud now that data isn't refreshed as frequently um, your cloud data is, I think, about every three to four minutes. So um, your information which you're seeing on your, on your phone is not going to be as up to date as the information that you're seeing on your home assistant box because um, all the phone data is coming via the cloud. Um, that's when you're using the either the um, day app or the Solarman app or if you've got a, another uh, branded um, interface to the to the Solarman service. Um, it's very nice in that there's almost no cost. Um, basically you just have to to get the the home assistant box and you are not uh, you're not incurring any expenses to link up on this side. So relatively easy and pretty cheap to do. Okay, the next integration I want to talk about is uh, Gary Waterworth's SunSync integration. So that's um, any um, any inverter using any one of the Elinta dongles. Um, SunSync have now got their own servers as well. So if you're on Region One, you will be on the Elinta servers. Otherwise, if, I think if you're on Region Two, you're on the SunSync servers. And the, the data flow for this is from the inverter to the dongle to your router and then up to the cloud. Um, there's no way at the moment that the, the home assistant, um, your home assistant box can query the dongle directly. It has to go via the cloud. So we're reliant on the cloud updates for that information. Now, um, that means that if you're using the standard uh, SunSync uh, region one it's about every three to five minutes I think it might be a little bit faster um, it just depends on what your frequency is set on your um, on your dongle um, you're you're basically going to see the same data that your phone is seeing in the SunSync app and um, the they were talking about I heard um, Keith from SunSync talking about the the SunSync uh, cloud servers having faster refresh rates and they were talking about once every minute um, so it will work you'll still get the data um, but it's not going to be as fresh as the data coming in from the Solarman app um, cost is also basically it's just going to cost you your home assistant box
Okay, the third integration I'm going to talk about is using uh, ESP Home with an ESP32 box, uh, a little ESP32 microprocessor and an RS485 um, five connection on it. Um, this is the system that I use. Um, the data flow on this is you still have your inverter talking to whichever Wi-Fi dongle you have. So it'll be either a SunSync or a SolarMan uh, dongle. That data still goes up to the cloud and you can view that data with your standard apps. Um, the, there is also a connection from the RS-485 adapter to the RS-485 port on your inverter. That data then flows through the ESP32. Now the ESP32 has got all the queries put in it for the Modbus um, interface on the inverter. So that's querying the, the inverter and those the answers to those queries are then being sent via the Wi-Fi network to your home assistant box. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the cost for this is about 200 Rand and that'll get you the ESP32 and the, the RS-485 uh, module. And um, it works very well. The refresh rate on this is between every 10 and 15 seconds. Um, I'm not sure if it goes any faster if you don't have the Wi-Fi dongle put in. I haven't checked that. It may do. I'm not sure where the bandwidth limitations are at the moment. Um, I th would just need some experimentation. If somebody's got some time, maybe they can fiddle around with that and see. But this is a, a really good solution. You don't have anything going up into the cloud unless you want it. And um, I, I personally have my, I still have my Wi-Fi dongle logging all the data up in the cloud. I like it like that running. And then all my automations and everything run using my ESP32. Okay, the, the fourth uh, integration is from Keller ZA. I haven't done a, a video on his integration yet. Um, I don't have a um, USB RS-485 adapter. I have used it in the past though, and it works very well. It's, it's been around for quite a while. I think, he's, I think he brought it out about a year and a half ago. And um, the refresh rates are super quick. The data flow in this is going to be from the inverter into the USB RS-485 port and that's going to be plugged into your um, home assistant box. So um, the downside of having it that way is that you have to have your home assistant box close to your inverter if you're going to use an RS-485 adapter. Um, you can use a RS-485 to Ethernet bridge um, there is one using a, um, a, a Raspberry Pi, I think. And so you can have a little Raspberry Pi um, querying, uh, taking the queries from your home assistant over the network through the Raspberry Pi into the box and then the, day, the, the readings coming back. Um, in this setup, your home assistant is doing the queries to the Modbus uh, interface in the inverter. Um, it works uh, very well. Refresh rate is about the same as the RA, as the ESP32 option. Um, again, you're not having any data going via the cloud, and the cost for this is relatively cheap. Um, ESP, uh, USB to RS-485, I think you can get these for about 80, 80 Rand, somewhere around there. Um, and it also uh, doesn't interfere with you using your existing dongle as well. So your existing SunSync or SolarMan dongle can carry on working and sending all the data up to the cloud for you. Um, if anybody would like to see me, if you guys would like to see me doing the uh, doing an integration with the Killer ZA integration, drop uh, drop me in comments, please, and I will do that for you guys.
Okay, so this is a comparison of the Solarman refresh rate and the um, ESP32 refresh rate. Um, if we go over here and we have a look, this is, I'm using the ESP32. Um, it usually refreshes about every 10 seconds. So um, sometimes a little bit more, but um, that'll then, uh, what it's doing now is it's querying, the ESP32 is querying the inverter, and then when it gets the information, it sends the latest information back to the inverter. So usually 10 to 15 seconds for that. Um, if we compare that to the Solarman, um, there's the Solarman um, queries, that's 43 seconds, okay, a, a minute. I usually see 45, between 45 and 60 seconds it takes to get a, a refresh from the Solarman dongle. So that's querying the Solarman dongle, it's not going up to the cloud. So there it refreshed, so just over a minute. Now, the, the SunSync is going to be um, the, the refresh time, the time between readings is going to be longer because it's having to go up to the cloud. So even if the cloud is, um, is sending through the updates faster, um, it all really depends on how quickly the SunSync dongle, how often the SunSync dongle is updating the cloud server. And I think you can imagine if they've got thousands and thousands of uh, inverters connected to that box, um, we're, we're not going to see that. Uh, the one thing I've just noticed, there we can see the, the battery state of charge from the ESP has gone up to 46. The Solarman hasn't updated it as yet. You'll probably see that it'll come through on the next refresh. And then it'll pop up to, to 46%. Okay, that's actually just gone up. Okay, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I hope that um, uh, answers any, uh, any concerns people have got or any, uh, any questions that people have got over what integration they should be looking at doing. Um, if you're not sure as to what, what box you want to use for your home assistant, um, there's a great video from uh, DigiBlur. I'll link it. Um, if you're going to be doing automations with your inverter and you're going to hook up other smart devices in your house and that type of thing, I would suggest looking for an Intel NUC or similar small PC. Um, the Raspberry Pis are um, pretty hard to get hold of at the moment and you're going to pay a price premium for them. You can get something that's more powerful at a really good price, probably cheaper than an Intel NUC. I mean, are cheaper than a Raspberry Pi. You could get an Intel NUC or there's some from Dull. There's a few other boxes as well. But check out the um, DigiBlur video and I'll link to that as well. And um, please remember to like and subscribe if you find my content useful.